Welcome to this week's episode of Top Knox Fishing. I'm your host, Mark Cooper. Come along with my friend Brian and I as we have a fun adventure chasing giant freshwater striped bass on a shallow river section in the heart of East Tennessee and Big Striper country. Well, what's going on, you guys? Brian and I are waiting out this giant thunderstorm, or at least to have a break in that giant th thunder, thunder, words I can't talk, uh, thunderstorm. <laughs> and uh, he's watching TikToks and looking at memes. And I got the boat loaded up back here. We're gonna try for striped bass, smallmouth, maybe some largemouth. We're mostly gonna be throwing artificials. Uh, but we did bring the bait tank, so I'm going to take a couple live baits up there with me. And we're going to see if we can catch us a couple of toads. And uh, I caught one up here the other day. Uh, it's really sketchy getting to where we're going to go. So we'll see what happens. All right, so we're fishing this shallow riffle section right here. We've got a river situation here in Tennessee, and it's shallower and dang it over there. And then you've got a cut, which we call a cattle chute, off on the right-hand side right here. And just imagine a cattle chute where they push the, the cattle through and it funnels the fish. That's what we've got going on right here. And uh, we're sitting in two feet of water, casting a five or six. It's gonna gradually taper down to 10 as we get further back and uh, the striper and the smallmouth will come up on these riffle sections and feed on bait fish that come down. Now the primary bait fish that they're gonna be feeding on are gonna be gazard shad, uh, skipjack, some alewives, and um, maybe like a golden eye or two. And uh, that's pretty much it. And we're just gonna ease ourselves back downstream. It's really windy out here, so this audio is gonna be hot dookie, but the fishing been good. We're going to see if we can catch one or two. I've got one live skipjack in the tank back here, but I'm going to be throwing this big jackknife glide bait that my friend Todd makes. Uh, well, made. He's not making them right now, but that's what I'm throwing glide bait wise. If I can't get any to come up and eat this, then I'm going to use a uh, the one live skipjack I've got down in the deeper section. At least that's the idea. I'm gonna have to bump myself out just a little bit here or I'm gonna hit some of these rocks. You can see them down there. The boat control's difficult today because, ooh, damn, that's a big ass rock. Don't hit that. Eee. All right, we're okay. That was sketchy. I gotta get myself back over now. I'm trying to sit back behind that current break a little bit so I can cast over here into the, the chute. But it's a lot easier said than done. And we're trying to hit that far bank where there's current breaks for them to sit on. And then the real active ones will just be out here in the center of this chute. Right now the wind and the current are playing against me, so it's like blowing the boat all over the place, making this difficult. Yep, blowing me out of the money zone, or into the money zone actually. Put this sucker on 10 and we're getting back over. Seam. I'm gonna put it on like four, see what that does. And I'll probably have to readjust it again. This current kind of sucks you over to that bank and the wind's blowing over there too. But I'm wanting to stay as far as I can off of it because those fish are again on the edge of it and then out in the center. 
a few moments later. Well guys, I got a striper on my first five casts. <laughs> no, the striper up and active. Yeah. Right on the edge of the show. Yeah. Well, my game daggum GoPro wasn't even turned on when that fight started. That was my first, you no, know, my, what was it, second or third cast with the glide mm -hmm. pack? And this thing came up and popped it. We were trying to catch some smallmouth. They're starting out. And boy, we started off with the striper. Not a big one, but a fun one. In 3.7 feet of water, baby. Let's go. All right, we're going to release him. Cool, cool water here. Let's swim right off. She gone. Peace. And then I got you a glide bait rod down there too. Sometimes these fish in the summer key in on big baits, like everything. Oh, look at that. Look at that big giant striper behind it. Got him. Got him. Got him. Oh gosh. Did you see him come up on it? I, I couldn't see three of them. That's dope. I told you there were a bunch of them here. Holy crap. Yeah, you get a glide bait on. Go grab the other glide bait. This thing's just tearing. Dang, this thing's fighting, bro. Throw back over there. That's what I did the other... Oh, look at him coming up. That's what I did the other day when I missed one. I just threw right back in, back on it. Boom. Come on. Yeah, pop, pop, pop. Oh, buddy. So, uh, yeah, we up here throwing glide baits. And we catching fish, baby. Waited for that giant storm to go away. It finally did, and we're back. Hooked up. Epic. Epic. Look at that striper, bro. Look at that fish. Oh, yeah. He's. I told you, dude. And they're still going to be there. We only hooked one of them. That's a good fish, too. Real good fish. We don't have a net again, y'all. No, we don't. Okay, I got that turned off. Oh, that's a heifer. It is. That's a good fish. Got his tail? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's a that's heifer. A heifer dude. <laughs> that's a good one. Bro, I told you they yeah. were up here. I said, Dad going, I, I was he graduated from the police academy and I left and uh Came uh, up here to fish for a couple hours. He's like, yo, bro, where you at? He called me, and I was like, you know what's funny? What? They're too bigger than that. Than this. Really? I swear. I didn't see him. I got these dude, these new polar. Did you see him? I saw him. You had, I told you, dude. This was the smallest one of the bunch. That's thirty pounds right there. Yeah. Epic, bro. High five. Old jackknife. Get her done, baby. Yes, sir. Alrighty, guys. We got us a big old bruiser on the glide bait. Four fish came up. This was the smallest one, according to Brian that was on it, but it's still a monster, and we'll take her. We got a gut on that sucker. We're gonna let her back. See ya. Goodbye. Well, we're we gonna try to bust Brian's uh, glide bait cherry now. We got a, a shallow riffle and a shoal coming out up there, and it gets down to a deeper hole right here. And the, the smaller striper was up shallow, and these bigger ones are a little bit deeper. We're in seven feet right now, but it's probably 10 over here. And we're just working these big, big eight inch plus glide baits. This is a jackknife that my friend makes, and then that's one by Okuma. 
or fish lab. And uh, we're just using these big baits to target these summer river fish. They're up in this cool water. It's 80 something degrees on the main lake. Um, and up here it's 60s all year. So you just gotta find that cool water. And in a second, we're gonna do one more uh, go through here, I think, just cause we've had so many fish. I mean, we've only been fishing for 45 minutes, 30 minutes now. I caught one striper or two stripers and uh, I don't know. Maybe it was 20 minutes. Like it what? First three ca casts I caught one. Yeah. 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 So they're active. We just had a big mega storm roll through, like huge. And this is we're on the back end of it right now. And I may have Brian throw on a. Uh, a red fin here in a little bit. He's learning how to use that glide bait right now. But it'd be cool to get a red fin bite where we can get it waking across the surface blown up. I thought like before I caught that one, I thought I saw a boil behind my bait and I was like that, my bait didn't make that. So I let it sink down just a second and then wham, I saw it get hit. Fought it for a second, missed it, popped off, another one hit it, bam, fish on. I, I saw it, there, there were four misses before. Really? Yeah. Epic, epic, bro. I gotta buy me some of those, except get a prescription. Love it. Yeah, we're coming back into that pool. It looks like there's a couple like independent pools here. Don't be afraid to just cast straight up the river off to the left too. I'm going to just start working around. Okay, okay. Alright. Let me check her back out there again. Well, we caught a couple of stripers, missed a couple of other stripers, and now we're going on a section of the river I've never been on before. And we ain't got no map. It's two feet of water. Brian's making sure we don't hit a shoal, even though you can't see shit. Going on a little top knock fishing adventure, baby. Having fun. Hopefully we don't knock the transom off or the prop, because that would be no bueno. Looks like it's getting a little bit deeper up here, though. We'll see. Well, that was a fun little trip we had there. I caught one big one, one smaller one, um, missed a couple others. Brian had one hooked up for a brief second and just popped off. I didn't get that on camera. But uh, it was a fun little evening after that big giant storm that rolled through. And we caught one big one and a small one. And then uh, the current picked up like way too heavy and we had to leave. Basically, it was just too hard to fish. And uh, yeah, so... That's just how it goes. We threw for, I don't know, two, three hours there, maybe a little bit more. We spent uh, some time after that exploring upriver, uh, trying to get over some shoals in my boat, which was really difficult. So we're going to have to come back in a jet boat, I think, later and target some fish that are further up the river because I really don't want to knock off a prop or my lower unit because that's crazy expensive. But luckily, my buddy's got a jet boat that he may let me borrow for a week or so so I can go and scan all these rivers around me and uh, find the big old stripers because this is fun. This is me learning new stuff and fishing waters that I've never fished before uh, because they're just so hard to get to and I end up doing a bunch of other stuff. So catfish are still spawning so I'm going to take some even more time and let them just fully come off the spawn because I really hate pulling my hair out trying to catch them this time of the year um, and I'm just kind of letting them do their thing with the spawn. And the stripers are moving into all the cold water river sections right now because our main lake temperatures everywhere are in the 80s, low 80s to mid 80s. So those stripers are going to go to the cool water sources, whether that's deep or up in the rivers where it's cooler if you've got a trout river running into it. Um, this time of the year, you really don't want to uh, target the deep stripers unless you're going to keep them. And I don't keep big fish. And... Um, 
So I just don't target them. And the reason why is because those stripers are going to sit down in um, this section of water that has the highest amount of oxygen because it's cooler. And that's usually really deep. And the further you come up, the um, warmer it gets and the less oxygen it gets. And so if you catch one down there that deep and you bring them up, even if you release them back really quickly and put them back in the water, there's mortality studies that show that a very small percentage of them are able to get back down to that deeper, um, cool water uh, than what you would think. Like most of them are going to die. So I understand if you're out catfishing with cut bait and you catch one on a river ledge here in Tennessee, I mean, it's just a part of it. And unfortunately, that fish is probably going to croak. Um, you can try to get it back as quickly as possible, but just know that um, it's probably not going to make it. Um, and if you've got somebody that'll keep it and clean it, do that, um, or try to get it released. But unfortunately that's just a part of doing this. Uh, so I don't fish the main lakes this time of the year until the water temps get back down into the low seventies to high sixties, uh, before I'll start targeting them on main lakes again, unless they're busting on top. So that's a little bit different. Like they're up in the water column then. And you can catch them there, but if you're like in a deeper section of the lake that's 60 to 70 feet deep and they're sitting down and 40 feet on the thermocline or something like that and you catch them, they're going to die. So just something to bear in mind if you want to study conservation or like try to help the fisheries, which is what I try to teach here. Like I'm going to tell you how to catch them and the best ways to do that. But also we got to understand that this is a finite resource and they have to be stocked. They don't reproduce abundantly like they do in the ocean because um, there's a lot of specific factors that they have to have to be able to do that successfully on a large scale. And they just don't have it in fresh water in most places. So something to think about. Thanks for coming along with Brian and I on this fun adventure chasing striped bass with artificial baits. We'll catch you on the next episode of Top Knox Fishing. If you're new here, hit that like and subscribe button, the bell notification down at the bottom. It'll tell you when we upload new videos. And uh, if you're a returning viewer, thanks for supporting the channel. Um, I've got all the links to the products I've been using in the description below. Um, there's also a link to PayPal if you want to help the channel that way. Just whatever you want to do to support us or leave a comment for the algorithm and a like and share it on Facebook or whatever. We appreciate whatever you can do uh, to support us and we look forward to bringing you more content in the future on how to catch big fish and have fun with your friends and family. We'll see you later.